Son, uh, what you just got through here? 408, I'm sorry. 408. Number 408. Let's sing it real big and loud. Ready? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let her receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Amen. Number two. On the second, ready? No more let sin and sorrow grow. Nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessing flow. Far as the curse is found. Far as the curse is found. Far as, far as the curse is found. Good. Last down. He rules the world with truth and grace. And makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love thank you you can be seated that was a short song service wasn't it <laughs> all right we're gonna we're gonna pray uh, we're going to receive our offering, get right into our lesson, and then we're all, we got a lot of folks that ain't even got here yet, but they're going to get they're going to get left behind because uh, uh, we're all going to eat supper tonight. Amen. Been looking forward to it all day, all week, and so uh, as for us, just come on right quick. And we'll do our regular Wednesday night offering and just give tonight. Lord bless you for it. If you didn't get your offering in Sunday, if you want to do that tonight, that'd be good. And uh, we're going to have just a quick Bible study and head out. So uh, uh, let's stand one more time, please, if you don't mind. Everyone stand one more time, and let's ask the Lord to uh, bless the offering tonight. And you give, and don't forget the, the bus kid uh, money we're raising for the bus kids. We're asking everybody that will to give a special offering. We're going to buy all the bus kids something for Christmas. And it's coming in slowly. Uh, we haven't gotten near as much as we had last year. But uh, we're going to try to buy all of them uh, at least a $10 gift. That's 150 kids, $1,500, and then a bicycle or two bicycles on each bus route. Uh, so that's another 100 bucks. So each route. So uh, let's all give tonight. Honor the Lord, and uh, he'll, he'll bless you for it. Everybody just put God first like you're doing everything else, and uh, you'll never go wrong. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all you've done for us. We pray now that you bless this offering. Let it be what you want it to be. We love you. Have mercy on us. In Jesus' name, amen. Bible's open now, and uh, we're going to get right into our lesson this this evening. Appreciate that. Uh, good singing tonight. We're cutting everything short tonight. We're going to get right into our lesson for tonight. Turn to John chapter 1, and uh, while you're turning in your scripture there, we're uh, we're going to remind you that uh, we will be going visiting Saturday morning, Lord willing. We're really looking forward to it. Saturday morning at 9.30. Uh, everybody wants to help visit the bus route. We're going Saturday morning at 9.30. And it's going to be uh, a good week to visit because our big day is the following Sunday. You're going to see something Sunday morning like you ain't never seen before. Not, not this Sunday, but the next Sunday, the 22nd. Uh, we're going to bring all those kids in here. We're going to have all them gifts up here. So it's going to be a really Christmas time to remember. So don't forget that. Also, the adult play, the bigger kids play, teenage kids and adult play practice will be Saturday afternoon at 530. And it's very important that everybody be here. 
Um, we're, we're, we need to get on it now. Got a short time to go on this. Look at John chapter one this evening. And I want to bring you a part of a, a lesson that I, I did last year. And I, it always comes to my mind at Christmas when you hear it on the radio and stuff. So I'm not going to preach tonight. We're just going to talk and study a little bit on this great subject. John chapter one, verse 14. Um, well, you look at verse 1 first. John chapter 1, verse 1 said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. See that capital W? The Word. Who, somebody tell me who that's talking about. Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Jesus Christ is the living Word. Your Bible is the written Word. And it said the Word, look at verse th uh, 14. And the Word, capital W, was made flesh, that's Jesus Christ, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. To me, that's, that's Christmas there, buddy. The Bible said the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now think about that. The Word, God was made flesh and dwell among. When Jesus Christ was walking around down here on this earth, y'all, he was God in flesh. Now, uh, the, some people have a hard time understanding that. They said, well, well, was he God or was he man? No, he was all God and all man at the same time. He was the God man. He was God in flesh. I'm telling you what, I had to make a, Lord, that would make a backslid presbyterian. If you, you think about that just right, and you think about could not God in flesh coming and walking around that we can see him and then talking to us. If you don't, I'm, I'm going to give you a short comparison between Jesus, the living word, and your Bible, the written word. You can't separate them. They're one and the same. If you don't know one, you don't know the other. If you don't read, if you don't know the Bible, you don't know Jesus and, if, and vice versa. If you don't love one, you don't love the other. The man says, well, I just love the Lord. I don't go to church. I don't read the Bible, nothing like that. He, he's a nut or just a liar one. You, if you, you cannot love the Lord and not love the Word. They're the same thing. This is the written Word. He's the living Word. When He was the Word made flesh. He was the Word made flesh. Flesh. Think about that, man. Just think about that. Now, uh, uh, you can sit up all night and not figure that out. Uh, I want to. I want to make some comparisons tonight. And the first thing I want to say is, Jesus Christ has two natures: human and divine. Right? He has two natures: human and divine. As a man, he walked around here. He ate. He slept. He worked with his hands in the carpenter shop. But as God, he knew everything and was powerful and could do anything. Let me give you some scriptural examples of that. Look at what it said here in, in the Bible. Clearly seen. As a man, he thirsted. He asked the woman at the well there, I want, I want water. He was thirsty. God don't get thirsty. But as God, he gave the water of life. Ain't that something? As a man, he went to a wedding. But as God, he turned the water into wine when he got there. See, he was God and, and man. As a man, he went to sleep in the side of a boat one day. But as God, he jumped up and told the waves to lay down, and the sea just went flat like that right there. He's a God man. God don't get sleepy. God don't get thirsty. He was, that was the man Jesus. But men can't make the waves lay down. That was the God Jesus. He was the, he was the living word of God. As a man, he was tempted by the devil. But as God, he resisted it and never committed one sin. That's something. In 1 Timothy 3.16, the Bible said, God was manifest in flesh. Jesus said, he that has seen me hath seen the Father. He's enough man. He was enough man to cry 
at the grave of Lazarus. But he has enough God to say, Lazarus, get up. And Lazarus come walking out of there. My Lord, my goodness, Bill. Lord, in mercy, that'll put a shout in your soul. Like an old fellow said, if that don't light your fire, your wood's wet. That, that, that'll do something on the inside of a person, if you, if you believe that. Uh, he, he, was a, he was enough man to pray, but he's enough God to make intercession for us in, in our prayers. The written words like that. Now, did you hear what I said? Jesus has two natures, human and divine. The Bible has two natures, human and divine. You ever heard anybody say, well, men wrote the Bible? That's true. You ever heard anybody say, God wrote the Bible? That's true. God used the hand of men to write the Bible. The Bible says it like this. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost got a hold of the head, the heart, and the hand of those men and wrote the Scriptures. So the Bible has a divine nature and the Bible has a human nature. You see that? Just like Jesus. Yet they both have a divine and human nature. Amen? He, he was God. You can't kill God. They killed the man. But he was man, so, but he was God, so he didn't stay dead. Uh, the, the Word of God is just like that. You can't kill the Word of God. You can't stop the Word of God. The Bible is... Is, is has two natures. Number two, number two, Jesus Christ was and is perfect and without fault. Jesus Christ was and is perfect and without fault. We believe that Jesus Christ walked on this earth for 33 and one half years and never committed one sin. All God's people said, right. We believe that God, Jesus Christ never committed a sin. If he did, he, he couldn't be our Savior. He never took one step out of the way. He never had one word come out of his mouth that was wrong. He never said, did one thing that was wrong to anybody else. Jesus Christ was, is perfect and without fault. The Bible said, who did no sin. Neither was God found in his mouth. You know, when Pilate examined him that day, Pilate said, I find nothing wrong with him. I can't find nothing wrong with him. I can't find nothing wrong with him. You know, that's what we that's what we tell people all the time. They'll say, Well, all them preachers are a bunch of hypocrites, and all them, all them Christians are I, I ain't a bunch of fakes and all that. And I and I know that. There are preachers that are hypocrites. And there's some bunch that ain't, too. And they, there's hypocrites in every church. One old guy kept saying, uh, he said, come to church. And the guy said, I ain't coming. There's too many hypocrites. And the guy said, well, come on. One more ain't going to hurt us. <laughs> That's, right. That's true. That's true. Now, the church has got faults. Church has got faults. Preachers got faults. But you ain't going to find nothing wrong with the Lord. You ain't going to find nothing wrong with the Lord. People say, ah, you preachers ain't none of you perfect. That's exactly right. I ain't, you ain't, and nobody else is. But you're not going to find nothing wrong with him. He was and is Perfect. He, they examined him. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, they said, never a man spake like this. I mean, we never heard nobody talk like this. Nobody's ever had the impact on the world that he had. There's nobody like him. There's nobody that can even compare to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was and is perfect. Now, so is the Bible. The Bible was and is perfect and without fault. No, people say, well, there's mistakes in the Bible. Listen, if we don't have the, the Bible is Jesus Christ in written form. So if the word's not right, Jesus is not right. You go to find him fault with the Bible, you go to find him fault with Jesus. He is the word. Isn't it funny that God compared his son to a word, a word, like I'm speaking words right now, or you write a word. That's what God said his son was like, a word. That's a strange comparison. And that's how intertwined Jesus Christ in this book is. This is the book, people. We believe that God inspired the Bible way back long time ago and preserved it so that we have his word today. So it's like Jesus is perfect and without fault. The Bible is perfect and without fault. You ain't going to find nothing wrong with the Bible. If you find something wrong with the Bible, what's wrong is in your head. It ain't in the Bible. 
There is nothing wrong with the Bible. There are no mistakes in the Bible. There are no contradictions in the Bible. If there's something wrong with the Bible, there's something wrong with Jesus. So uh, that's number three. We're moving right along here. I hear stomachs growling as I speak. Uh, somebody said, I haven't eaten nothing all day. Waiting to go to the steakhouse tonight. Number three, listen to this. Jesus is hated by some and loved by others. Isn't that the truth? Boy, they some people hate Jesus. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, I, I, I do a lot of that stuff for young people on rock music and rap music and all this stuff, those video presentations and stuff I do, and almost every one of them. I mean, you stay start out with the Beatles, what John Lennon said about Jesus Christ. You know what John Lennon said about Jesus Christ? That he was a dirty, stinking, Catholic, Spaniard bastard. That's what he said about Jesus Christ. You know something? John Lennon never said a bad thing about Muhammad. I wonder why. John Lennon never said a thing about Islam. John, because the one that was in John Lennon hates Jesus Christ. And the one that's in John Lennon loves Islam, the devil. And so uh, Madonna, the upside down crosses, every rap group, Jesus, Jesus can't save you, life starts when the church ends, all them rap songs that I show videos to the kids, uh, over and over and over, Jesus Christ, superstar, blaspheme, it's always Jesus, Jesus. Marilyn Manson grabs the Bible, and rips it up on stage, and throws it out there and go like that, like he's going to puke, and they have a cross up there and mock the cross and have upside down crosses and everything else. You know, he's loved by some, and they, just like these people that hate him, there's a millions of people in this world love Jesus Christ enough to die for him. Amen. I mean, if it come right down to it, brother, we ought to be willing to lay our life down for him. If, if somebody says, you die right now or live without Jesus, say, just go ahead. Shoot me. Take me out. I'd rather die than live without him. He's loved by some and hated by others. In like manner, the Bible is loved by some and hated by others. You know, there ain't no book in the world hated like this book right here. Ain't no book hated like that. It's always the Bible. Always. You know, they don't never get on TV and laugh and mock the Koran. It's always the Bible. It's loved and hated. It's loved and hated. Number four. I'll hurry. Number four. Jesus Christ saves you and gives you the new birth. Sure does. Um uh, he bore our sin. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 25. The Bible said he bore our sins. And the Bible said if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Jesus Christ saves us and gives us the new birth. Guess what? So does the Bible. The Bible saves you and gives you the new birth. Somebody said, no, now the Bible don't save you, preacher. I beg your pardon. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 said, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. You sure are born again of this seed right here. Uh, the, you're born again and say, you cannot separate Jesus Christ and the word. They're inseparable. You can't love one without loving the other. Your attitude toward one shows your attitude toward the other. I'll say this. If you leave your Bible laying all week and don't even touch it, that's the way you feel about Jesus Christ. If you grab it first thing every morning and read it last thing before you go to bed at night and you think about it and you quote it during the day and all that, that's how you feel about Jesus. However you feel about your Bible, that's how you feel about Christ. But they're one and the same. He's the living word. That's the written word. You can't separate it. You can't say, well, I love him. I don't really care. Uh -uh. Don't work like that. Uh, you can't love one without loving the other. Your attitude toward one shows your attitude toward the other. And you spend one time, you spend a lot of time, you spend a lot of time with the other. You spend a little time with one, you spend a little time with the other. Number five, Jesus is a quote, living Savior and ever liveth. He's alive right now. We don't serve a dead Savior. We don't, our Savior's not in the grave or a tomb somewhere over yonder. Not like Buddha or Muhammad somewhere. He's alive. And he ever liveth. He's alive right now. And he's looking at you right now too, by the way. 
He knows what you're thinking right now. Everybody in here and everybody in the whole world. He's alive right now and ever liveth. He conquered death. He's alive right now. He's not dead. He never will die. Uh, and to say, to say he's dead, say the Bible's dead. The Bible is alive. Do you know that? It's alive. It's alive. Hebrews 4.12 said it's quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. You know the word quick in the New Testament means alive? Remember the Lord said he's going to come and judge the quick and the dead? That means, uh, you know, I used to, when I first got saved, I thought the quick and the dead, and I thought the quick is that little part of your fingernail right there. Mom would always say, you know, you, you punch that real hard and you'll see if you're alive or not, quick and the dead. That's the way I interpreted that scripture. Uh, I asked a little boy one time, teacher taught on the quick and the dead, and he'd been cutting up the whole class, and she said, now, little Johnny, you tell the class who the quick and the dead are. Who's the quick and the dead? And he said, no, he lived out in a big city somewhere on a busy highway. And he said, the quick are the ones that get out of the way of the cars, and the dead are the ones that don't. <laughs> but actually, in the Bible, the quick means alive. It means alive. Quick. So when you get saved, you're quickened. Before you're saved, you're dead in sin. That's why the Bible, you remember the Lord told that guy, he said, let the dead bury the dead? That's what he's talking about. You're dead in sin. Let them people, let dead people be pallbearers. Let sinners, let, but you come and follow me. That's what he's talking about. Uh, and she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. That's what that means. So Jesus is living and ever liveth. And so you're, Attitude toward one shows your attitude toward the other. And last, number six, Jesus Christ will someday judge this world. Right? He told, he told him that time, he said, all judgment is committed to the Son. He's going to judge this world one day. And the world will be judged by him. Your desires, your motives. The Bible said every idle word that men shall speak, they'll give an account. They're of in the day of judgment. So did you know that in the same sense, the word of God, the Bible, will judge this world? Right. Jesus said, the words that I speak, the same shall judge him in the last day. You ever seen the Bible where it says the, the books were opened at the judgment? Um, it says the books were opened and another book was opened. So, so when people stand before God be judged, there's books, plural, at least two, and there's another book, which is the book of life. So that means there's at least two books that you're going to be judged by at judge, on judgment day besides the book of life. All's in the book of life's names, as far as we know. But there's at least two other books that's going to be open, and you're going to be judged by them. If you're not saved, especially you'll stand before God and be judged. And I, the only two it hints out in the Bible, and I'm on scriptural ground when I say this, it's not just my opinion. One of them is the book of remembrance. All the things you've done your whole life. And the other is the Bible, the book of God. The words that I speak, the same shall judge him in the last day. So I'm, I'm assuming that the two other books at the judgment is the book of remembrance and that book right there. You'll be judged by it. You'll be judged by it. Man, stand over and say, but, but God, uh, no, I, nobody told me. And the Lord opened the book and says, you're without excuse. And a man will say, but Lord, I, I knew some people and they was hypocrites. And the Lord's going to look at him and say, every man shall give an account of himself to God. See, that book will judge you. And a man will stand up there and say, but, but Lord, I couldn't understand the Bible. And he'll turn it over there and say, the, the way is so simple, a fool or a wayfaring man need not err therein. Man, he got you. He's got you, y'all. he got you. Listen, you'd be a fool to fight against God. Know when you beat, man. Know when you beat. Listen, I, if I, when I get in a fight at school or something like that, listen, there's times when I, I give up before it starts. <laughs> and that's the way I am with the Lord. I, I ain't fighting him. I ain't fighting him. You can't win. You ever heard the old saying, you can't beat them, join them? That's what you better do with the Lord. Join him. Join him. Get on his side. And so the Bible 
will judge you at the last day. The Lord Jesus Christ will judge you at the last day. And during this Christmas season, I'm closing. During this Christmas season, I want you to take your Bible and get in it like you never have before. As, as you hear me say all the time, I don't say this brag, I say this to encourage you. I read my New Testament through three times a year, my Old Testament once. There is no reason in the world everybody in here from seventh grade up couldn't read your Bible through in 2020. There ain't no reason in the world. None real. If you can read, you can read four chapters a day and read the whole thing all the way through next year. And some of them days you can read 15 if you get behind when there are little short ones in Psalms stuff. So your attitude toward your Bible shows us your attitude toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Get in it. Get in it. Make up your mind. I'm going to get in that thing. He didn't say understand it. He said read it. Read it. Read it. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Amen. Amen. All right. I hope you're ready to meet the Lord tonight. We're all going for a great time of fellowship over to Steakhouse. Um, now, you tell them when you walk in, I, well, I'm shining like Baptist Church, and that way if there's other like regular customers there, they won't get you confused and try to charge you full.